Hello and welcome to another Tea Cozy Folk Vlog. I'm Susie Cowper and I've got lots of things to show you today. Most of which are Terry's chocolate orange cozies. I don't think I've got a Tea Cozy to show you at all this week, which is a bit strange, isn't it? Considering I'm Tea Cozy Folk. But anyway, who cares? It's nice knitting and I'm going to show you the lovely chocolate orange cozies that I've got to show you. So the first lot of Terry's Chocolate Orange Cozies I want to show you are the Alice in Wonderland ones that I've been working on. Now, I've because there's so many Alice in Wonderland characters, I've um, picked four and I'm doing four in part one and four in part two. But you'll see anyway. So this is all part one. This is Alice and she's a big character I wanted her to look you know when she'd eaten something and got giant so she's a big girl with long legs and she's got lovely little Sarah Jane shoes on look and um and she's got a cake in her hand because the cake will make her smaller and um and to be honest everybody would love to have a cake tied to the hand wouldn't they that'd be nice but yeah there she is so she's got a little Alice band and a little pinafore to keep her dress clean and look she's got underskirts under her dress so it's a lovely detailed little Alice thought you know she's the main character so we had to do her and put a lot of a lot of detail in so that's Alice and also oh you've got to come off Alice oh look she's six um this is the dodo now the dodo is, um, he organises a race after they've been in the water in the big sea, he organises a race, but it's a fair race so nobody ever wins and they just keep running around. It's a bit like, you know, the rat race. But, um, so here's my dodo. I thought I'd give him a monocle and a swagger stick. Makes him look quite Victoriana, doesn't it? I like that. So that's him. Ooh. Oh, he's not going to stand, look, is he? No, there he is. And then there's the blue caterpillar. Do you remember the blue caterpillar? Who are you? Look, there he is. And he's sitting on his mushroom. Is it the right side gets bigger and the left side gets smaller? Or is it the other way around? I can't remember. And um, he's got a little arms holding it look so it goes up and down and I've used five millimeter black beads for the eyes I think it just you know when it's a little project like this having beads for eyes really makes them come alive and you know it gives them a really cartoony feel so that's the blue caterpillar on his mushroom and then I also made ooh, the white rabbit because everybody loves the white rabbit and he is wearing spectacles and he's got look pink eyes the book says he's got pink eyes but if you haven't if you haven't got any pink beads you can put the bead on an old knitting needle that fits and then paint it with pink nail varnish top tip but um this is the white rabbit and he's got his oversized pocket watch and his ears and his little waistcoat and there he is oh and his little tail look this is the tail was made with you know you do the loopy stitch and then snip each loop and then unravel the fibers and it makes a lovely fluffy looking tail so that's the white rabbit because everybody loves the white rabbit and these are all in part one and the knitting pattern for part one so you get all four patterns is out on the 7th of september so that's part one now i'm going to put them to one side and we'll have a look at part two alice in wonderland part two now what i have to say about part two is that some are finished and sewn up and some are not some are just held together with pins 
So I have to be careful and you'll have to appreciate that there might be pins and threads of yarn hanging around, but you'll get the gist. So this is my upside down flamingo. You know, in the story, they're playing croquet and the mallets, the croquet mallets are actually flamingos and the balls are hedgehogs. Well, I wanted to do a flamingo with his legs in the air because I don't know, it tickled me. So, um, so this is my flamingo. Look, you can see his flamingo head and I suppose it is a bit like a, a croquet mallet, isn't it? And then his legs are in the air and I've stiffened the lower part of his legs with cotton buds so that they stand up and they stay nice and straight and tall. But the top, look, you can see there's no stiffening in that at all. So they can lean forward, you know. But he's funny, isn't he? So here's my flamingo. He's already sewn up. And then... I've got the Queen of Hearts, because you've got to have the Queen of Hearts, haven't you? And there she is. She's, um... do you know what? I suppose really she's the villain in the story, isn't she? And usually villains look ugly. And I don't know, she, she looks unusual, but I wouldn't say she's ugly. I quite like her. But yeah, so she's got a lovely dress on with the heart. She has got a bit of a big nose. And then she's got big puffy sleeves. And there she is with her crown on. So, and I like the way, you know, the humps on her hair, that old style they used to do. But I like that it kind of makes her face look heart shaped. I quite like that. Anyway, that's the Queen of Hearts. And then, Oh, this is the Mad Hatter. Look at him. So, oh, and he's got his teacup, his cup and saucer. Look, you could put those together if you wanted to. And um, he's got his cup and saucer with the dormouse in his cup. He's sweet, isn't he? I thought he was rather cute. So um, this is the Mad Hatter and he's got an oversized hat on. And he's got coattails at the back. He's got an old fashioned jacket on. Big feet and a big nose. And he's got a row of loopy stitch for his hair. Just to make him look a bit mad. They're nearly all mad there. So that's the Mad Hatter. He's lovely, isn't he? I like the purple. It's um, Starcraft DK Violet. It's really nice. I don't get a chance to knit with purpley colours much, so it's really nice when I get the chance to get the purples out, so that's really nice. Anyway, that's the Mad Hatter. And then, oh look, this one's, I've not even started stitching him up yet, but this is the Cheshire Cat. I love the way his tail stands up. I love that. And his little head, I'll give him green eyes. And because he's got the big smile at the bottom, his legs and feet. His legs and feet don't all match yet because I've decided I like these feet better than those ones and this one better than that one. But I've got to finish that off and finalise him and get him all sewn up. And I'm just in the stages of typing up the pattern and re-knitting it to make sure it all works. And then I'll ask a test knitter to knit them for me. And this will be on sale later in the month. I think it's the 21st of September that it will be live on the website to buy. This is part two. So, you know, you can get part one and then you can get part two. So, and they're quite long patterns. I think both of them are about 10 pages to each pattern. So they're quite long patterns, but yeah, they're the Alice in Wonderland chocolate orange cozies. We're going to have a short break now from Terry's chocolate orange cozies for a sock update. Breaking news! Susan's finished the socks! These are the socks I was knitting for my daughter. And they're just plain vanilla socks, look, with a heel flap and top down. 
So just simple, easy socks. But these were the socks that I was taking, you know, when I went away and on holiday and on long car journeys, just for something to do while I was in the car. I wasn't driving, but these were my holiday socks, I suppose, my little traveling project. And I finished them, there's two, so that's good. They're really nice and warm. And they're for my daughter to keep her toes warm this winter. So she'll be pleased. Now she can have them now, I've shown you. I said you can't have them yet because I've got to show people on the vlog. But now she can have them. So she'll be pleased with that. That's good news. The Tea Cozy Folk calendar's ready. Oh, look at that. It's so colourful, isn't it? And it's A4 size. Look, you can see how big it is. Look, compare it to a chocolate iron. So you can just gauge the size. Sometimes with photos, you can't see how big things are, can you? But it's A4 size and it comes in a nice wrapper to keep it nice and clean and pristine. And, and these are the 12 cozies that are featured inside. I'll show you. So here's one not in its wrapper look. So, oh, this is the first page has got, look, it's got your um, knitting abbreviations and I don't know, materials. Well, no, it's not got the materials actually. It's got about knitting pattern help, tension, sizes, that sort of thing, terms of use, all that, you know. And then the pages look like this. So you've got the calendar part at the bottom, but then for January, we've got an owl chocolate orange cozy and there's a list of materials here what you need to make the owl and there's a little quote and this is for January and if you need help each page has got a QR code so you can scan that with your mobile phone with a smartphone and it will take you straight to the help video and um, there's also a link if you want to type it in on the actual knitting pattern and then on the back is the pattern and that's the same for every cosy. So there's Valentine's Day. And on the reverse is the knitting pattern for Valentine's Day. Well, not Valentine's Day, February. But it's a love heart, you know, it's for Valentine's Day. So there's 12 pages, all of which have the same format. And then, oh look, Christmas is, December's the last. I like December, I like the little star, I called him Twinkle. But, so here's the last one, and then there's a piece of card at the back, you know, to keep the calendar stiff and help to support it. So that's the calendar, and they're all bound at the top with a little hanger, so you can hang him up in the kitchen. But, um, so all 12 knitting patterns are in there. And the calendars are already on the website. I'll put the link down below so you can go and order yours. And on the website, the price includes free post and package to the UK. And obviously to post abroad costs more. So I've put, um, I'll also put the link to Etsy. I think Etsy is the cheapest because if you buy it from eBay, they do it through their global shipping program and I think they are a bit expensive to be honest because um, I think they use um, I don't know super trekking with all the bells and whistles and it costs a little bit more but if you buy from Etsy no matter what country you're in outside the UK I think it's £5.30 post and package so whether that's America or Australia you pay £5.30 post and package so I'll put the the link to where you can get them on the website down below and also down below I'll put the link to Etsy where you can buy the calendars from Etsy so that you can buy overseas if that's what you want to and all the cozies fit a Terry's chocolate orange that's what size they are and they all use four millimeter knitting needles and I use Stylecraft special DK in all the patterns so that's that that's all the, all that stuff. Now on to the knitting. So I won't do them in order. I'll just do them in whichever one comes out first. So this is Panda. Look, isn't he cute? Somebody asked me if I'd got a Panda Terry's Chocolate Orange Cozy and I hadn't. And I thought, well, I'll do it now because 
you know, it, anything can go in a calendar, can't it? And I thought, you know, he's rather sweet, isn't he? He's rather cute. People are like him. And, um, and there is a National Panda Day. I think it's the 16th of March. So he's March. I know that one. He's March. And then, oh, look at this. Oh, can you see? Come on, panda, out of the way. This is a ladybird. And um, I thought he'd be lovely for one of the summery months. And he's got his little legs and his antenna at the front. <clears throat> oh, I'm going a bit croaky. And then he's covered in spots. So that's the ladybird. Can't remember the month. This is January. We've just seen him in the calendar. This is the owl and he's January. And he's rather cute. He's all knitted in one piece and his little ears pop up at the top. So that's the little owl. You know, and you can change the colours of these to any colours that you like. You know, it's great for stash busting. Use up all your odds and ends and make cute little cosies. They're lovely, aren't they? They're nice to knit and make and give us gifts. So a little mushroom with spots. Oh, I like this one. Look at this. I love daisies. They're my favourite. Anything daisy-like. And the bees go mad for them, don't they? Love little daisies. So this is... Oh, it's popped off when I picked it up. They're, um, this is the daisy. And it's got big petals and a big daisy head in the middle. And underneath it's green. So that's the daisy. This is a little bee. But he's got little antennas and his wings. This one's knitted in a different way. The others are all knit up and then decrease at the top. But this one, you start, oh, I think you start this end and um, increase and they go across and then decrease on the face to make the the stripes go the other way. Otherwise they'd be going up and bees don't look like that, do they? So that's the little bee. Oh, this one's funny. He's a little fish, a gold fish. Look, his big tail and his fins and his eyes. I love his lips. Ooh, he looks like he's giving you a kiss. Big boggly eyes. Goldfish are funny, aren't they? <laughs> cool. So that's that one. Now this one's November. I know this one. This is a big poppy. I really love this one. It's pretty, isn't it? And it's such a big poppy. You know, you do see knitted poppies, don't you? People wear them as brooches. But this is a lovely, big, oversized one. And again, I've um, done a row of loopy stitch here and then snipped to them and then look, unraveled the fibres because poppies have a, a fluffy little bit, don't they? Just there. And it just makes it look, I don't know, more real. That's the poppy. I'm running out of room. This is the one for February which is the one with the love hearts. I love the stripes on this. It reminds me of Bagpuss. Hmm. <laughs> so that's that one. This is April. It's April showers. Of course it is, because we have April showers. It's a little rain cloud with... Um, a rainbow coming off and a couple of raindrops. Yeah, that's the little cloud. And it's made in a bubble stitch. There's a help video for this. It's included in the calendar and there's a QR code for it, but you can find it on eBay anyway. If you were to type in um, April showers cloud bubble stitch or something, I don't know. <laughs> It'll come up. Google will find it, won't it? Always finds it. Tea Cozy Folk, Rain Cloud, Toby's Chocolate Orange Cozy. It would find it. I can put the link in down below. Shall I put the link in? Might just be easier. 
So that's that one. Oh, look away now if you don't like spiders. I'll call you back. This is the spider. He's for October. Oh, isn't he creepy? Look. Oh, I think um, I think most people would run if they saw one this size in the house. Ooh, he's creepy. But I thought, you know, kids would really love it, won't they? Halloween and trick-or-treating and give them a big spider. Yeah, I don't like that. And of course, all of these cosies, you know, the Alice in Wonderlands, all these ones, you don't have to knit them as cosies. You could knit them as big balls and stuff them and put them on the Christmas tree and they could be, well, perhaps not the spider, but they could be, you know, Christmas bauble decorations. I mean, it'd be lovely for an Alice in Wonderland themed Christmas tree, wouldn't it? To turn them into baubles. Look, especially this one. This one could be on the Christmas tree, couldn't it? Hello, he's so cute. I love his little happy face. And he's really simple and, you know, he's... I suppose he's a lot less detailed than the others, but sometimes simplicity is lovely, isn't it? And that's the little star. He's Christmas. Well, he's not Christmas. He's December, you know, and I think the stars always look a bit brighter, don't they, in December? So that's all the Terry's Chocolate Orange cosies that are in the calendar. You've seen all the cosies. You've seen the calendar. Now you've got to buy one and knit your own. Yay. I'll put all the links that I said that I mentioned down below so you can find things. While we're still involved in Terry's Chocolate Orange Mania, I've got one other thing to remind you about. I will be at the Knitting and Stitching Show in Harrogate on the 19th of November. Now, it sounds a long way off, but it's going to race up to that time and we'll run out of time. So I just need to show you this. I am running a workshop at that show on the Sunday, it's a Sunday workshop, and I will be doing a two hour workshop to knit a Terry's Chocolate Orange Cozy that looks like this one. And this one's got loads of the quirky little stitches that I use in my tea cozies and in my Terry's Chocolate Orange Cozies. And you know and it's just so you can practice and try out all these new stitches so you know there's bubbles and that quirky cast off that i like to do and adding a frill so you don't have to sew it on you know it's knitted on and loopy stitch and this funny cast on cast off stitch and it's going to be topped off with a little bell at the top for christmas just makes it feel a bit festive doesn't it with a bell on the top and um and the workshop is two hours long and we'll sit and make one of these. We'll do one together. I make one too. And all the yarn supply, uh, supplied, all the yarn is supplied. And there'll be a Terry's chocolate orange supplied because you, you need a model, don't you? And I'm also going to be giving everybody who attends the workshop a free chocolate orange calendar. So we'll all have a calendar as well. So if you want to join the workshop, I'll put the link down below, but you have to go to the, the Knitting and Stitching Show website and you go onto their workshops. And then if you search the workshops for Cowper, if you put Susie Cowper in, and then I'll come up and then you can book on and join in. And you'll be there and I'll be able to meet you and that'll be great. I'd love to see you there. And um, and it'd be nice to have some friendly faces there as well. People who I, you know, I already know. That'd be really nice. And um, and we'll all sit and we'll knit one of these. And that'll be great fun. So that's the show and the workshop. But also on the same day at that show, I'm giving a talk in the Creative Living Theatre. And that is in the middle of the show. It's a free talk. I stand up and talk and I, there are people listening. And um, and I'm going to be giving tips on knitting. Not knitting. Well, it is. It is knitting. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be doing, I'm trying to remember what, I can't remember what it's called. But it's tips and hacks for knitting and sewing up tea cosies. 
so it's just you know to get a more professional finish and that kind of thing so it's just little tips some of them you perhaps know others you know you perhaps don't know but you know if you like me i do even if you know i see on facebook a thing and they're saying oh we're going to give you some tips on knitting i always watch them because i want to improve always it's like oh they might show me something i don't know so i watch them just in case there's that one little nugget of information that i've never heard before so i can add it to you know my knowledge and and use it you know there are things that i think oh yeah i'm going to use that there was a fancy way to join two bits of yarn together. Apparently it's the strongest knot in the world. I've completely forgotten what it is, but I'm sure if I Googled it, I'd find it again. But anyway, so it's about tips and hacks. So you'll be able to come along to that as well. And um, yeah, so that'd be good. So if you can come, do come, because yeah, it'd be nice to see people and I'll be at the show. So you can say hello to me. That'd be really good. I'd like to meet you. So, yeah, so I'll be at the show on the 19th of November. See you there. I've not done another sketch for my next tea cosy pattern. I'm, I've got to do that. I'll perhaps do that tomorrow. But what I'm thinking is for the next project, I want to make an elephant tea cosy. But you know how they decorate Indian elephants and they have the big things on the front of the face and I don't know just decorative stuff everywhere and big tapestries and rugs and things on their backs that's what I want to do next because um I've always loved elephants they're lovely aren't they and you know they're big majestic animals but you know when you watch the documentaries they do have human traits don't they and they're sensitive souls they're so adorable so it'd be lovely to have a nice decorated elephant to celebrate elephants that's what i thought so that's my next project and um i'll be doing the little blog about that and a little video tomorrow and it'll be online so you guys pop along and have a look i'll put the link to the blog down below so you can check it out but that's all i've got to show you this week and um and it's all been <laughs> chocolate orange cozies really isn't it but um, I hope to see you next month and, um, and I'll have something different to show you. Hopefully I'll have an elephant to show you. That'd be good. And um, yeah, so that's all, folks. And I'll see you next month in October. So stay, stay safe and well. And I'll see you soon. Happy knitting. Bye.